all day for these two teams to face battle here today. We're starting here right at eight o'clock, Tennessee and Ohio State as the leadoff batter in that lineup is Tegan Cordelletti and she fouls it off for strike one. Love the aggression from Cordelletti coming right out of the gate, sees the first pitch outside, tries to slap it to the left side of the field. That's exactly what you're trying to do as a slapper and as a leadoff slapper, trying to get things going. Cordelletti batting 432 on the season and she'll ground out to third there for out number one. Nice play by Gibson coming off of the bat of Cordelletti. Gibson was in slapper position several feet ahead of third base. And because of that position, she was able to get that nice hop and make the out at one against the speedy Cordelletti. McKenna Gibson will take over at third today. She has been a staple over at third base for Karen Weekly and her squad. We'll set the Tennessee defense for you from left to right. Julia Katsoyanopoulos starting out in left and center. Kiki Malloy and in right, Taylor Panel. Scoring the button, pulling it back is strike number one on the batter. Taylor Heckman. One of those players, one of the several seniors on this team, heavy veteran presence for the Buckeyes and that one two punch of Cordelletti and Heckman can be difficult because of their veteran experience and their time with Buckeyes. You mentioned the veteran, the senior Heckman at the dish. 5-3 from Utica, Ohio. Strike number two in there from Gottschall. I mentioned Gottschall's spin. Well, she also has a full arsenal as well. A curve, a screw, a rise, and then the change up. So not only is she going to mix different zones, she's also going to mix speeds. And she gets struck out number one there. Peyton Gottschall, who has been a strikeout queen herself ever since being on Rocky Top, gets K number one to start this one. Heckman bites at this rise ball and watch her hands they go right underneath Heckman needs to meet that ball on the same plane get on top of it or else it's going to be a long day for the Buckeyes do a little three hole spot in this lineup Jasmine Burns they call her Jazzy for Ohio State she leads the team in homers and RBIs a big bat for head coach Kelly Kovac Shanley in her 11th season coach Shanley saying that Burns is by far what the biggest name they've ever recruited to the program in the last couple of years. Burns sees that one in and unable to frame that one behind the dish today. Sophia Nugent for the Lady of Alls. We always talk about freshmen trying to catch up to the speed of the game. Well, Burns is a rare freshman that right away just hopped on to Division I play. She was able to get a hit in her very first 10 collegiate games of the season. That's very hard to do considering the pitching level that changes from that high school level to then Division I and also, oh yeah, you know, SEC pitching as well. First team All-State in her final season in California. Marietta Mesa High School and that talented prospect that Coach Shanley was able to bring up north to Columbus, Ohio. Burns tied for the most home runs on the team as well with four. So this is a freshman that's been consistent at the plate and also brings the power. The one, two, swung on and missed. Strike three, Peyton Gottschall. Have yourself an opening. Curve change and screw, also very methodical. We'll try to take advantage of hitters' weaknesses, including this young woman right here in Kiki Malloy. It'll be hard to take advantage of any weakness that Kiki Malloy has, but she'll see a first pitch strike in at 0-1. Kiki Malloy, obviously the catalyst of this offense, but this is a Lady Falls lineup one through nine that brings the power, including Laura Mueller, who had four home runs yesterday. Laura Mueller, have yourself a, a day. day. <laughs> My goodness, what a day yesterday. Three home runs in a game in their first game yesterday against Missouri State, and then the one home run to follow off. She'll be in the five hole spot today for Karen Weekly squad and Kiki Malloy will just launch that one over to the third baseman. It'll be a leading off single for Kiki Malloy. Smith pushes this one up and in and Kiki does a great job trying to get her hands around it. She kind of gets jammed a little bit. Look at Kiki's hands. Her hands try to come through the zone as quick as possible, able to get that barrel around and that's how she's able to turn on that pitch high and inside and become a base runner for the Lady Vols. 
And when she gets on base, you might as well go ahead and put her on second base. She steals bags at just an unbelievable clip. And she'll stand there on first. You know that takes a lot of strength to get that ball punched out over the third baseman's head. So Kiki Malloy getting on base and Destiny Rodriguez in the two hole today is just keeps climbing her way up this Tennessee lineup. It's a great way to put it. Rodriguez wasn't an everyday starter last year, but found her way into the lineup in 2024. And Kiki Malloy off and running. Good throw down, but she's safe. Make that stolen base number 16 for the speedy Kiki Malloy. And that's why she's one of the most exciting players to watch in all of college softball because of her combination of not just power, but also her speed. Kiki Malloy gets a great jump on this. Take another look, puts her head down. That left hand coming in. It's a bang, bang play. That's a heck of a throw from Burns, the freshman catcher. But Malloy able to beat her by inches. You mentioned stolen base number 16 on the season, number 130. 33 in her Tennessee career here in her fifth season. Destiny Rodriguez at the dish. We'll see the pitch in for a first pitch strike 0 and 1. Rodriguez taking over that two hole spot as Riley West, the Lady Vols right fielder, out with an injury. Not expected to see her this weekend. Malloy's going to take off here, and she'll get into third, standing up. Kiki Malloy once again. Just taking the bags as she may. Tough pitch for Burns to get in front of behind the plate, and those are some of the small details, the small mistakes that will come back to bite you when you're facing top 10 teams. Rodriguez will shoot this one other way, and it'll go foul down the first baseline. Destiny Rodriguez got her first career home run early on in the season. And in that opening series against Baylor, a huge top 25 win to begin the season for Tennessee. And we talked about it, just keeps climbing up all the way to the two hole spot. Not quite sure if she'll get all the way to the, the leadoff batter in this lineup <laughs> with Kiki Malloy starting off as that one's outside. We'll run four, three and two. And that's what makes this Lady Vols lineup so dangerous is because after you face Kiki Malloy, then you have consistent hitters like Destiny Rodriguez, McKenna Gibson, and then, oh, yeah, the power continues with Zeta Pooney and Laura Mueller. The 3-2 called strike three. Allison Smith gets a huge out number one with Kiki Malloy standing on third. Smith with a nice screwball low in the inside. Rodriguez doesn't think this catches the zone. She holds up on it, but nice framework by Burns behind the plate. And the first strikeout of the day for Smith. Burns, we mentioned when she stepped up to the dish, she can hit the ball and she can also catch behind the dish for Coach Shane Lee's squad. To look up and see McKenna Gibson standing right next to her here in the three hole spot today, batting 345 here in that junior campaign, looking for RBI number 18 to put Tennessee in front. Gibson coming off a fantastic 2023 season as a sophomore, where she had career highs in batting average, hits, doubles, on base percentage, you name it. She's coming off a great season, trying to improve that here her junior year with the Lady Vols. 2023 all SEC first team member a year ago. Really one of the leaders on Karen Weekly squad. Also named to that USA top 50 watch list along with that young woman on third base. The 2 1. <laughs> Upstairs will strike and we'll even it up at 2 and 2. And here are those USA softball watch lists as you mentioned with Malloy and Gibson. That's not an easy list to make. So the fact that Tennessee has two representatives on that USA Top 50, that's impressive. Such high expectations this season for Tennessee. And Gibson will sneak that one in the third baseline. Rounding third and coming home is Malloy. She scores. Tennessee on top, one to nothing. Nice battle by Gibson at the plate. Took a couple pitches, fouled off one, and then rips this one inside gets her barrel all the way around goes right past the third baseman in bump it's possibly even over the bag and you don't need much more than that to score kiki malloy 60 feet away nice inside out hitting from gibson tennessee strikes early with a one nothing lead here in inning number one 
Dana Pooney, the cleanup batter today, batting in that four hole spot, already a runner on first in Gibson. And she'll see that one away, 1-0. One oh. Zeta Pooney coming off of a surgery, upper body surgery in the fall. She's been cleared to hit and has been doing well in, in the lineup ever since she was re-entered. Hasn't been cleared to play in the field yet, but Coach Weekly says that her progression is going very well and is trending in the right direction. Pooney currently at 262 on the season, but does have the five jack so far, and she launches that one into left field, and it'll scream foul. Zeta Pooney, another one of those power hitters for Tennessee that you could not, as a pitcher, you're not able, able to give her anything good, anything close to that heart of the plate. You have to be able to mix zones, right? Keep her off her toes, and then also mix speeds, throw in a change up, try to get her to chase and keep her off balance. The pitch is low at 3-1, and that's really going to be difficult for any pitching staff that Tennessee sees. They've got power, one through nine, but they also have the really situational hitting that Karen Weekly loves from her squad, as we saw there from Gibson driving in Malloy. 3-1 is in for a strike, and we'll go full at three and two. It's about making adjustments, whether it's in the box or in Allison Smith's case, in the circle. She's seeing these, this Tennessee team first line up through, first time through, needs to make adjustments throughout the game. The three two will run just. Right there, she goes in the rain to drive that one over the left field fence. Miller making an immediate impact since transferring over from MTSU this season. Coming over from Murfreesboro, also, Karen Weekly can really recruit and then bring in Players out of the transfer portal. As Coach Shanley will come out and have a chat. I think this is a great time for Coach Shanley to call timeout, bring in the infield, everybody take a deep breath, reset, refocus. This is a crucial part in the game right now because Tennessee only has one out, two runners on, and their hottest hitter at the plate. Ohio State needs to make sure that they, one, know exactly where they're going with the ball, but two, also make sure they're not giving Miller anything good or give her a chance to bust open this game because that's exactly what this young woman is capable of doing. Miller struggled on early in the season, and as you mentioned, just one day at the ballpark can turn around your campaign. Four home runs a day ago, and she'll see that one high at 2-0. Miller, one of two Lady Vols in program history to have three home runs in a game. And she didn't even stop there. She had four in two games. Right now, this is a young woman that's seen the ball very well. The best thing she can do today, continue what she's been doing at the plate. Continue to relax, see that ball, and get that barrel on it. She'll see the 2-1 in here and a strike. A nice get back pitch from Smith there to even the count at two apiece. She's also a very fun player to watch. Miller, every time camera is shown at her, either at first or even just right there, she's smiling. She's having a blast. The 2-2 two -two is hit, blooped left field, and the grab is made out and left by Coraletti. A huge out number two for Allison Smith in the circle. Excellent job by Smith to jam Miller a little bit on her hands. That's why that ball was popped up into left field instead of hit driven past Cordelletti and left. Excellent job by Smith. And like you said, Zach, a crucial second out. She'll still have to face number seven, Sophia Nugent in this lineup. The transfer from Oklahoma. We know what the Sooners have done the last couple of seasons in women's college softball. Another impact players over here in Knoxville behind the dish for Karen Weekly today. Back-to-back -back transfers in this lineup for the Lady Vols. You have Laura Miller coming over from MTSU this season, Sophia Nugent coming over from Oklahoma. It's a great example of how head coach Karen Weekly is taking advantage of that transfer portal to, find, to better her team all around. Nugent saw 50 games a season ago, 18 starts over at Oklahoma, hit 274 a season ago with seven long balls in that lineup. 
the 2-1. Runs outside, Nugent seeing the strike zone well here in her first A-B tonight. Smith doing a nice job bouncing that ball both on the west and the east side of that plate, right? But we mentioned how you're going to have to keep these lead balls hitters off their toes. So far, Smith going to all four quadrants. Taylor Panel looming on deck with the 3-1 incoming and a nice strike. Just painting that inside corner there is Smith. I like how after bouncing that ball outside, she goes right back inside for that crucial strike too. Pitch number 31 in the first is outside. Ball for Smith wanted that one. So did the entire Ohio State section. And a walk there will load the bases for Taylor Panel. Smith with the curve ball must have just missed on that outside part of the zone. And now we talk about big moments in the game. Well, bottom of the first, two down, bases loaded. Doesn't get bigger than this. Panel the sophomore from Milan, Illinois. We'll see that one in for a strike, 0-1. I like how Smith comes right back at the nice at the next batter, goes to that inside spot. That screw ball been working well for her so far tonight. Gibson at third, Pony at second, Nugent at first for Tennessee. Seventh Lady Vol to come to the dish in the first. Kiki Malloy already in on an RBI single for McKenna Gibson. Tennessee looking to add damage in inning number one. The pitch. Nice strike there. Again, painting the corners from Allison Smith. Smith pitches in the high 60s, so she does have pretty good velo. But because of the movement on her ball, that's where she's trying to get hitters to swing and miss or roll one over. And Panna will absolutely obliterate that to left field. If it was inside that pole, it would have been gone, but a long foul ball. Tennessee right fielder, Riley West, not expected to play this weekend with an injury. And Taylor Panel, one of those players, just a sophomore, stepping up, hitting 275, trying to make her way into this lineup. And two well outside. And when you're sitting there in the circle, what does it kind of do for you? Pitch number 37 upcoming. You're not thinking about that pitch number. Right now, 2-2, two, two, you're thinking about this next strike. You got to get her off, down. And her 2-2 two, two is launched right side and fell. Especially with the bases loaded right now, Smith knows how crucial every single pitch is here with this batter. And, and that's the key for the entire game. Doesn't matter if it's the first inning or the last inning, whether it's your 37th pitch or your 100th pitch, you got to just focus on that one pitch at a time, focus on the one batter in the box. Each side trying to set the tone in the first. And that one is launched into center field, back at the track, at the wall. What a catch by the center fielder. Eppley goes back, does a great job finding the wall behind her, and five wins per season over the last five full seasons, and have also finished in the top half of the Big Ten standings for the seventh straight year. So when you look at this Ohio State Buckeyes team, yes, they're still trying to find their way to that Big Ten title, make a regional, NCAA regional in the postseason, but this is a team that has always been a consistent competitor. You mentioned trying to make it to a regional. Coach Shanley has brought her Buckeyes here to Knoxville five times in the Knoxville Regional. Four and 10 record here in Knoxville, but a lot of times when you look at that Knoxville Regional, the Buckeyes set to play here as that one is punched into center field. Kiki Malloy back at the track. That one hangs up for out number one. Cammy quarter cracks, got a good piece of that ball, just a little bit short, and Malloy able to get under it. And that's a big out for the Lady Vols because quarter cracks has been red hot. Four for six on the day yesterday with three home runs and six RBI. So a big first out for Tennessee. So now we'll do way to number 24, hitting in the five hole spot in this lineup, Sam Hackenbrack will step in for Ohio State. Senior from Massillian, Ohio. She shares a hometown with starting pitcher today, Peyton Gottschall. Oh, there you go. 
What, are, what is that called? Six degrees of separation, something like that. Softball world is small. Let me tell you something. Softball world, very small. This one fouled back here at us at one and two. When you think about how young these young women started playing this sport, right? Club ball starts, rec ball starts, and then high school ball starts. Sometimes you're playing on three different teams, trying to get recruited, trying to get that scholarship to play at the next level, and these young women able to take advantage of their young experience and do that. Representing the city of Nassillian well, I would say, for these two young ladies. You got, you got to think these two have crossed paths somewhere before, especially being from the same city. Exactly. If not, their teammates have. That one low in a battle here. Hackenbrack, one of six seniors, five seniors, excuse me, in this lineup today. She's one of those players that Coach Shane Lee just raves about, can't talk enough about in terms of her leadership and play. And line left side and foul. You mentioned the seniors on the staff, three graduates as well. So nine players right there in their senior graduate lineup. This team also bolsters 13 players from the state of Ohio. But Coach Shanley and her staff have done a phenomenal job working the transfer portal, working the high school ranks. Check swing, did she go? She did. Strikeout number three for Peyton Gotchel and Hackenbrack didn't like that one. I thought that was the right call by first baseman um umpire Dave Retnicker. Right here, look at Hackenbrack's bat barrel of her bat. It breaks that plane middle of home plate from this angle. Look at her hands right there. See how that bat goes all the way past home plate. Great call by umpire Heinecker at first base. Good call, partner. That's a strike. Every way you look at it. 0 and 1. Peyton Gottschall dealing here in inning number two. Just 22 pitches in, and two outs in the second. As a young lady that made that play in center field will step in, Kirsten Epley. What a play. Epley just balling out in center field for that, leaving her feet, making a great catch. Saving three runs for this side. She'll ground it out here to Rodriguez. On to Miller for out number three. Tennessee with a back, especially after you lose a big ace in Ashley Rogers, and it's a brand new team this year. Julia cuts to Annapolis. will take that one off the back leg. And this is one of the toughest kids you'll see on this Tennessee lineup, and she'll walk that one off. Ooh, you can tell by the way she's kind of limping right here. That one must have stung a little bit, and especially because Smith pitches in the high 60s. That's not an easy ball to take off the mm. kneecap. Yikes. Oh, no wonder she kind of had to catch herself falling out of the box there. But like you said, Zach, that is one tough player. She's caught for years, so she knows a thing or two about wiping, off, wiping it off and moving on. That's going to be hard to wipe off off the kneecap, as you mentioned. Still trying to work it out there at first base. Smith, however, giving up a free bag, very first batter of this inning. And when you're going up against tough teams like Lady Vols, you can't give them free bases. And Kutsoyanopoulos is out and running, and she will still second sliding in head first. She says, take it off the kneecap? Uh, that won't mean, that won't hurt anything. How about we show off my speed? A great jump by Kutsoyanopoulos, quick peek, and she's in there. That ball, a hard ball to catch from Carter Cracks at shortstop as Kutsoyanopoulos now in scoring position for the Lady Vols. Squaring to punt is fall, and she will foul that one back to the screen. Bella Fall, a freshman, a talented freshman from the state of Georgia. She won a state championship back in 2021 at North Gwinnett High School. Number five prospect in the country coming out of North Gwinnett last season, according to Extra Inning Softball. But so Annapolis got about four or five steps off second. I think twice at that, back to second. Bella Faw taking over that shortstop position after graduating Mackenzie Donahue. Never an easy thing to do. And also still trying to find her sea legs in this lineup, hitting below 100 right now. I'm going to roll over that one and send it foul. We'll redo the 2-2. 
every aspect of softball jumps significantly when it comes from the gap of high school level to division one level but the biggest jump ask any player they will always say it's from the pitching it is the hardest aspect to catch up to coming from the high school level to the collegiate level because you go from about 40 50 miles an hour to oh yeah how about high 60s and 70s and so Annapolis is eyeing third base down there getting about halfway down the line down in second she'll giggle that one off as fall will see the three two upcoming pitch outside and a nice full count worked and a walk earned by Bella Fall. That's back to back free bases given up by Smith in the circle right now with no outs and two runners on Smith. Needs to take a deep breath, reset and regroup because she has to go up against the All American and star center fielder Kiki Malloy right now and she can't give her anything good. The lineup flipping over for Tennessee. Eight and nine reaches. And then the Tennessee home run queen herself at the dish. Number nine, Kiki Malloy. Malloy is one of those players who no longer sneaks up on anybody, right? She, everybody knows what they're pitching against when it comes to Kiki Malloy. And because of it, she's had to be more selective, more disciplined at the plate over the last couple seasons. I think a little bit early on in the season as Malloy knew she was chasing history early on. Kind of took her a while to get that 58th home run, that career record against Loyola Marymount earlier on in the season. But then finally after that, Kiki Malloy's bat is just heated up and she's now batting 424 in the season. I would argue it took a little while for her because they were facing some of the top competition in the country. That St. Pete Clearwater Invitational. You're talking about teams like number two, Texas, uh, UCLA. So many top teams in that tournament. Best pitching in the country. That one hit left side. Will it dunk in? Yes, it will. Rounding third and slamming on the brakes is cut Soyanopoulos. And Tennessee will have them loaded in the second. That was definitely the right decision by Coach Weekly to hold Quetzoyanopoulos at third. Kiki really just pokes this one right in front of Cordelletti at in left field. And Cordelletti being a senior left fielder, you know she has a good arm. She would have gunned down Quetzoyanopoulos for sure. Plus, you also have no outs. So you're not in a hurry to bring her home. And you have your two-hole hitter, Destiny Rodriguez, at the plate. No reason to be aggressive there. I think when you're in your 23rd season at a school, you kind of realize, okay, we can play this one a little she, less aggressive. Coach Weekly has learned a thing or two over her last 23 years on Rocky Top. I would say she's been in that situation a time or two. I went low and away to Destiny Rodriguez and we wanted it one and zero. If you're Ohio State right now, the biggest thing, number one thing on your mind, where am I going if the ball is hit to me? You have bases loaded, a force at any bag. They just got to get in out here. Disney Rodriguez will roll that over. What a play, it's short. And a throw over to first in time. Cut so Annapolis will score. The quarter cracks got the out at third. Cami quarter cracks. The shortstop with a phenomenal play absolutely lays out for this ground ball. Look at this. It's hit to her uh, non-glove side. She has to reach across her body and still throw from laying flat on the ground. That's one of those plays you see maybe once a season. And that's a huge play because Lady Falls only scored just one. What about the two plays we've seen defensively from Ohio State? My goodness. Well, and when you're facing a top 10 team like Tennessee, you have to have good defense and oh yeah, you gotta get lucky too. Quarter cracks laying out full extension to keep that one on the infield. And McKenna Gibson about took out Karen Weekly down the third baseline. That was a hard hit ball by Destiny Rodriguez too. That wasn't a slow roller. And because it got to quarter cracks so quickly, she was able to get the runner coming from two. Again, just a heads up play all around from Ohio State's defense. They have one down, two runners on. Got to get that second out here. The 1-1. One, one. A slow one in and it's a strike at one and two. You got to think Ohio State has probably already saved four runs in this contest. Epley in center probably scores three. That one 
over to quarter cracks definitely scores one so that's four left on or off the board for Tennessee Zach you're absolutely right if you're Ohio State right now you're saying stop the bleeding that's it let's hold them to two nothing and let's get back in the dugout and get the bats going now if you're the Lady Vols you're looking at this as hey this is a huge opportunity to bust this inning open let's go this is a bat that can bust it open in McKenna Gibson and she will see a 3-2 pitch upcoming Allison Smith, 55 pitches in. She's loaded the bases twice, but just two in for the Lady Vols. And that one grounded fat. Back in the first, Gibson had that little curve route that went inside the third base bag that scored Kiki Malloy. Looking to get on base or add to this Tennessee 2-0 lead in inning number two. Smith's 3-2, and we'll run it again. Good battle by these Tennessee hitters. Good battle by the Tennessee hitters. This is Gibson's eighth pitch of her at bat, and also flip it on the other side. This is a good battle by Smith, and really she's done a nice job so far. Those three hits she's given up have been either a poke into the outfield or a ground ball. The 3-2 again. Inside, and Tennessee will load the bases for the third time. And Zeta Pooney is going to have a golden opportunity here in the second to blow this one open. Smith has given up just three hits, but she's also had three free bases given up this inning. And that's what's hurt her so far. She had the hit by pitch, the leadoff hitter in Kitsoyanopoulos, who ended up scoring, and then walked Bella Faw. Gave up the hit to Kiki Malloy and then just walked Gibson. Those are the kind of free passes that come back to bite you and put you into difficult situations like this one. Bases loaded, only one down, and you're facing a hot hitter in Zeta Pooney. Now, Ohio State's defense right now, they know they have the force out at any bag. You have to know exactly where you're going with that ball. If it's hit to you, what are your options? And also know you can't hesitate because you have some speed on the base path as well. But Ohio State definitely has a chance to get out of this with only having allowed one run. But you have to play clean, smart defense right now. You mentioned the speed on the base pass. Destiny Rodriguez out. Amanda Allen in at second. And a dangerous batter in this Tennessee lineup. Zeta Pooney. We'll see that one low at 1-0. Pooney, 2023 All-SEC first team member. And she had herself a Women's College World Series named to the All-Tournament team in OKC. The one up. Check swing, did she go? She did not. Count run at 2-0. and oh. You mentioned Pooney's powerful run in the Women's College World Series. She led the Big Orange in RBIs with 60 and also was named to that 2023 Women's College World Series All-Tournament team. She started in 56 games a season ago for Karen Weekly's squad, and she has started in 16 of the 19 she's appeared in this season. I like this timeout called by Burns right now as she talks to her pitcher, Smith, gets a quick word in, most likely just something she sees, a tip or so, and then also just taking a moment to settle nerves. This is a big moment right here for both of these teams. For Tennessee, this is a moment to capitalize on and get ahead, really bust open this bottom of the second. And for Ohio State, this is a moment for them to show exactly what they can do defensively and also in the circle with Allison Smith. Smith will deliver the 3-0. Does Pooney have the green light at 3-0? She does not. I went down the pipe. It's 3-1. Train comes screeching by in left field here on Rocky Top. The 3-1. Strike two. Good, good conversation, I'm sure, there in the circle. Kind of calm Allison Smith down. She's pitched her best with the bases loaded today. Huge moment here in the second. That one rolled over. Could this be two? Fire on to home is in time. Kiki Malloy will be retired, and that's out number two. 
Another nice play by Quarter Cracks at shortstop. She was in a couple feet more than her normal shortstop depth. That's because she knew if the ball was hit to her, she was going home. And she was able to get that force out at four. Now two down and Buckeyes with a chance here to get out of here with only having allowed one run this inning, but they got to go through Laura Miller. Miller a hot bat in this Tennessee lineup, and I'm gonna think about it. If, if Ohio State can't get out of this inning, if Kortokratz went to two and tried to roll the double play, that would be, could come back to bite on, but Smith is dealing here with the bases loaded, 0-2 to Miller. Smith with the rise ball upstairs at one and two. What do you do when your back's against the wall? Ohio State has answered so far today. Laura Miller, Allison Smith, two in battle. That one blooped left side and out of play. Miller flew out to left field back in inning number one. Tennessee two of seven with runners in scoring position. They've got two there now, one, two. Cold strike three, Allison Smith. My goodness, she delivers. The innings pitched this season. These will be the two workhorses in the 2024 season for the Lady Vols. A couple of shutouts from these two young ladies a day ago in day one of the Tennessee Invitational. Tennessee outscoring opponents 22 to nothing yesterday in wins over Missouri State and South Dakota. Peyton Gottschall delivered in her contest and then as well, Carlin Pickens a complete game shutout yesterday for the Big Orange. Both pitchers doing really well this preseason part of the year. Scott Schultz goes upstairs, the rise ball for strike two. And that's exactly what you need from your preseason slate. You gotta face all kinds of hitters, tough competition, right? All of those at bats will get you prepared for SEC. Oh, and grounded foul. I think it's big for Tennessee. They had Ashley Rogers a year ago and could kind of rotate those three almost and kind of like a traditional baseball since Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but of course could kind of intermingle them whenever they wanted to. And now they've got these two absolute studs still here on the staff. Still though, a couple young ladies in the bullpen will need to try to get things going for Tennessee and that will be punch out number four for Peyton Gottschall today. Hannah Church tried to hold up on that one at the last second, but because of that slight indecision her bat was able to cross that plane a home plate and a nice job by the Henniker umpire at first base calling that fourth strikeout of the day. That was also the first strikeout not on a rice ball. Peyton Gottschall has gone to that rice ball for that punch out pitch. It's been hard for the Buckeyes to stay off of. This time she went outside with a curve and Church unable to hold up. Gottschall was strikeout number four today. Makes it an even 60 for the senior. And she had 130 strikeouts a season ago to just 22 walks. That K to walk ratio is a nice one for Peyton Gottschall. Caitlin Farley takes a strike here to make it two and one. These hitters for Ohio State need to be passing down information in the lineup. Even though this is their first time through, they have to be communicating. Because so far, Gottschall has been able to get them on her rise, get them on her curve. She has not allowed a hit so far. So these Buckeyes need to be talking to each other on deck in the dugout. Hey, what did you see? What did you see? Make those adjustments now. Strike out number five, Peyton Gottschall just strutting her stuff in the circle for Tennessee. That's that vicious rise ball that Peyton Gottschall spins so well. 
right here, right there. Farley's hands go underneath it. You have to have your hands meet that ball on the same plane with your barrel in order to get on top of that rice ball. I've never seen a rise ball <laughs> in the softball that I've played in my day. What Tr is it trust like me, facing that? You don't want that? to. That was always my Achilles heel. I loved chasing after that rice ball because it looks so good coming in. But then at the last second, that spin, that deceptive spin that Peyton Gottschall has, it just jumps in the zone right above your hand. So the key, start your hands high, hit on top. I will take that to my next church league softball. <laughs> if someone is pitching rice balls at your church league softball game, send them over to uh, Division One <laughs> softball. We we got some talent, some unscouted talent that needs to be checked. I'll just play in the field that day. The two one from Gotchel, in for a strike. One strike away from striking out the side in inning number three for 33. Mackenzie Bump is one of those super seniors on this team. And she's seen the ball well so far, had a home run yesterday. The 2-2 runs inside to Bump. This is the nine hole spot in the order. Gotchell has retired all eight Buckeyes that she has seen so far tonight. With five strikeouts so far, four of those coming on that rise. The 3-2, off speed, hit. Left field, and the grab is made. Joya Kutsoyanopoulos makes the grab. Nine up, nine down for Tennessee. In, in Hackenbrack, these are veterans that are leading the way for the Buckeyes so far, and it's going to be that experience that helps them not only hopefully have a hot start to conference play, but continue into the postseason. Conference play coming in two weeks for the Buckeyes, as Kutsoyanopoulos will see that one in for strike number one, or excuse me, Nugent at the dish. Ohio State opening up conference play March 22nd against Rutgers, and then it's off to the races. They'll face Northwestern, Penn State, Minnesota. Bunch of good teams. Meanwhile, the Lady Vols kick it off this upcoming weekend. Gonna be a fun, fun series here in Knoxville. I'll have the call for you here. Missouri and Tennessee. Could be a top 10 matchup as Nugent fouls that one off left side. We'll kind of see how Missouri fares this weekend as well as the Lady Vols. But excited for that one for sure. Very exciting, especially seeing how well both of these two teams are doing right now. The Tennessee Invitational, oh, Inv Invitational Ohio State winning both their games yesterday. Lady Vols winning both their games yesterday. Two red hot teams hitting well, pitching well. They're going strong into conference play. Nugent hits that sky high into center field and the sure-handed Eppelow outside, Eppley, excuse me, for the grab. Smith throws the off speed to Nugent and Nugent tries her best to hold up as long as she could, but just dips that back shoulder a little bit, popped it up. A great job by Smith being able to mix those speeds, getting a good hitter to pop up. I wish we could see the radar gun whenever Smith throws that off speed because it just glides in there. Again, she's doing a nice job keeping these Tennessee hitters off balance, right? We've seen her go outside, inside, a little up in the zone, also throw in that off speed. That's how you get these hitters to miss hit. And the panel here will see strike number one in at one apiece. What also impressed me about Allison Smith in the circle today how many times did the Lady Vols have a runner on her bases loaded? She continued to focus on that next batter. She didn't falter, she didn't waver, and Coach Shanley told that about, told us that that was one of her keys. She's a very methodical pitcher. She'll try to find the weakness of a hitter and utilize her pitcher, pitches to her advantage. She very rarely gets rattled. That one right off the ankle of panel, and she'll have to walk that one off. As the count will even at two apiece. Smith has been clutch tonight. Every bit of the word clutch for Ohio State. Loading the bases three times, but just two runs in. And that one sharply hit to first base. Oh yeah, another play in the field for Ohio State. 
talk about Ohio State holding it down in the circle, but how about also on defense, right? Hackenbrack makes the play real quickly. Some great reactions here. That is not an easy ball to catch. She has to go across her body, catch it with her glove side. Kind of makes it look easy, but that's the third, fourth impressive play we've seen from this Buckeyes defense. So, yes, Allison Smith doing a nice job in the circle, but her defense is also backing her up. You saw that little grin in from Hackenbrack after she made that yeah, grab. Yeah, she says, no big, I got you. I got you, Allison. She said, I'm either catching this or this one could hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 1-0 to cut Soyanopoulos is in at one apiece. And Allison Smith really has kind of calmed down here in inning number three. Six, seven, and eight here in the lineup for Tennessee. <laughs> that one just There's slow that as can nasty be. off speed. Comes in, kind of looks like a little bit of a hump and just drops in there first start strike. Look at Katsoyanopoulos. She's even laughing at that one. It was so juicy. When it comes to a changeup, you either have to lay off of it completely or stay back. She goes hitter there outside to run it even. You also have to have a game plan when you go up against a pitcher with such a great changeup, right? You have to know, okay, am I looking for this changeup? Am I expecting it so I know to stay back? Or are you looking for something else? You have to have a game plan. It's a two. Inside, and what is kind of your mindset when you go into that pitch? Because she can throw gas at you, but then she can turn it back and just settle in with what, in the 30s, 40s even? It depends how well of a changeup hitter you are. If you can stay back, then go for it. Swung on and missed. Throw down to first is in time. And for the first time tonight, Allison Smith sits down. On herself a night here on Rocky Town. She is a fiery pitcher in the circle for Tennessee. And she has every right to be as Gibson will fire this over to first. Rodriguez can't get there in time. And Ohio State is fired up down that first baseline. Love this decision by Ohio State leadoff hitter Tegan Cordelletti. This is a Buckeyes lineup that has been struggling against Gottschall. So what does she do? She decides to lay the quick bunt down, use her speed to her advantage, and becomes the first base runner for the Buckeyes tonight. I've got to ask you here, is that on Mueller crashing, or does Rodriguez need to be there quicker? Rodriguez ideally would like to be there a step quicker because Mueller has to come up and feel that bunt. She's in bump position. Honestly, the credit goes to Cordelletti. That was perfectly placed, very difficult to field. And then on top of that, she has her speed. So great job by the leadoff hitter. That's what you do when you're top of the lineup. You can hear the Ohio State dugout pumped up after that. You'll get on base any way you can. And does Tegan Cordelletti down at first base? She'll do way to Taylor Heckman here in the second. It goes back to communication with this Ohio State lineup. How quickly can you make adjustments? That was actually the key from head coach Shane Lee to us this weekend. She said, we have to make quick adjustments on the pitchers. That one punted down basically right again. Heckman will get down the line in a hurry, but can't get there in time. Cordelletti down to second for the Buckeyes. That was a productive bunt by Heckman. Take a look at where this one is placed perfectly in front of Gibbs, uh, Mueller. She has to come all the way across. And it looked like actually Heckman might have had a step or two there. Very, very close play. But again, a productive out by Ohio State moving the runner over to second base. Destiny Rodriguez was ready for that one. Got down to first in time. It looks like we could have a review here. It was a bang bang play. Heckman has a lot of speed. That's the leadoff hitter, Cordelletti, coming back to first base, possibly questionable of whether or not she left early. Is that the question? Is is that no? She did not leave early. So. This is a clear out here. She, Rodriguez gloves the ball before the runner touches the bag. But the question is, why is Cordelletti coming back to first base? We took a look at the replay. She did not leave early. So a big question mark there. Yeah, that's not sure where that one is. 
This is where we wish we had secret spies on the diamond that could hear into the conversations of these umpires and exactly what is going on. And you can see her talking to him, talking to Coach Weekly. Now she's going to okay. be awarded second now base. Now Cordelletti will be going to second base. So maybe this was all just a ruse. And they are testing us, Zach, on our softball knowledge. Here, here. here's another look at this. You can see Cordelletti, right foot on the bag there. She does not get off of that bag until that ball leaves Gottschall's hands. Question is, did they look at the batter in the box, Heckman? That could be a possibility. Regardless, Cordelletti, the leadoff hitter, is on second base. That was a productive out by Heckman. And now Ohio State trying to get something going with a runner in scoring position. I'll tell you what, these umpires cannot get it past you. There Great we, job. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Cordelletti did everything right there, and she is down at second. And this is one of those dangerous hitters in this lineup. They call her Jazzy. Jasmine Burns at the dish for Ohio State. She's got four home runs on the season. She can tie this one up with one swing of the bat. We talked to Coach Shanley earlier in the week. She mentioned this is one of the biggest recruits I've ever brought on campus here at The Ohio State. And she's in a big spot here in inning number four. An 0-2 count to Burns here in her freshman campaign. The moment doesn't seem to be too big for Burns. Yes, this isn't conference play. This isn't the postseason. But you're going up against a ranked Tennessee team, a top 10 team, and a phenomenal pitcher. And she seems to be thriving at the plate. Burns pops that one up. Will it stay in? It will. Nugent collides with Gibson. McKenna will hop up, laugh that one off with her teammate, and that'll be out number two. That's a tough one. You could hear the communication from both of them, and Gibson is coming in from third with Nugent throwing her mask off. It's hard to tell who really has the better angle on this. It's harder for Nugent just because she's coming from behind the plate, and you could see her glove is face open. At that point, Gibson's just trying to make sure it's caught, and like you said, they're smiling, they're laughing, so everybody's good now. Those are one of those those tweeners that can always cause some trouble. I was just about to say, I could kind of see the argument either side because Nugent probably thought Gibson's got to cover a lot of ground to get to this softball, but then... Gibson's thinking, well, Nugent has to rip her mask off and find the ball. And it's right in front of him. <laughs> either, so. either way, I'm sure both are happy to get out number two and a big one to retire Burns in the fourth. Now that big bat in this lineup that we headlined in our open. It's quarter cracks at the dish. Four of seven so far this weekend. Got those six RBIs and the three knocks. And she'll lob that one up and Nugent can't hang on to it. That might have been another twinner there as we were talking about Gotchel and Nugent. Right there in between the circle and home plate. Look at Nugent's glove. She has to have it in front of her and open, not above her head. So this is a basket catch that she's trying to make. That's never easy. She gets it jammed right there on her wrist and it just pops off. One of those kind of like freak plays that you absolutely have to make. And now if you're Ohio State, you're thinking two out rally, let's go. E2 on the catcher. Nugent, and now Sam Hackenbrack, 60 feet away from cutting this Tennessee lead in half. Also keep in mind, Cordelletti, the leadoff hitter, is your base runner on third. She has tremendous speed. That's who you want on third. And this is who you want at the plate. Hackenbrack, the senior, has been seeing the ball well. 13 ribbies in that senior campaign. Slow roller, Gibson is there, and Tennessee takes a sigh of relief as they get out of the fourth. Nice play by Gibson, ending the damage. Has been called to make big plays tonight. They have answered that call here as we are halfway through in Knoxville. Tennessee will have new hitter into the ball game, one of the many Leach sisters that have came across Home plate for Tennessee. Gabby Leach, the freshman from the Woodlands, will grab a bat here in the fourth. Leach will knock that one left side. 
Bump will keep it in front of her and we'll go at 0 and 2. Gabby's twin sister, Alana Leach, played yesterday and their older sisters, Aubrey and Kelsey, also played for the Lady Vol. So big Lady Vol family for life. Yeah, their oldest sister, you mentioned Aubrey, she is a legend here in Knoxville. Kiki Malloy had been kind of trailing her in total run scored and total bases. We mentioned Malloy has the Tennessee home run record, but looking out for some Aubrey Leach records that have been held here in Knoxville. That one outside at one and two to Leach. Leach lays off that outside pitch after quick, quick two balls on, or quick two strikes on her with two strikes now. Needs to just put something in play or at least foul something off. Leach taking over for Faw here and nice play there. That one will shoot the gap. Leach on her horse to second. She'll slide in for a leadoff double. Leach doesn't hesitate when taking two. As soon as she rounded first, she knew exactly where her ball was hit and knew she was had a chance to get into two. Does a great job power slapping this outside pitch over the head of quarter cracks. And because of that placement, because that ball goes in that left center gap, she knew she had a chance at two, did not hesitate. And now just like that, Lady Falls have a runner in scoring position. Not afraid to get dirty. Her second double of the season here in her freshman campaign. And she sets up Kiki Malloy in the top of this lineup. Right outside, 1-0. And, oh. and it looks like Leach. Leach is not at second base. Apologize, we missed that. We were so excited about her popping up there. I think what I might have noticed in our replay sequence, she might have stepped out of the batter's box, kind of toward home plate. That's the only thing that I can think of that put Gabby Leach in the dugout. What do we see here? Where does she make contact right there? See that left foot over that batter's box line, that box seven feet by three feet. You have a lot of wiggle room, so you can't step out of it. Great call by our home plate umpire, Heath Walker, as Kiki Malloy grounds out. 6-3 on the put out. Nice play by Quarter Cracks at shortstop. She's been just a vacuum over there whenever she needs to be. And it's also, again, the veteran presence of this Ohio State team with Hackenbrack, the first baseman, Quarter Cracks at short in the outfield. Cordelletti at Eppley. Excellent job by the Buckeyes defense today. Rodriguez rolls over that one foul at 0-1. You have to play well when you're facing top teams, but also have a couple really spectacular plays or get lucky, right? And I think Ohio State catching a big break with that double being called back from Leach. The 0-1 upcoming to Rodriguez is one of that slow rollers at now one and one. You mentioned this Ohio State team getting lucky, but you also look at it and you gotta think, they're making all these plays. Maybe it's not luck almost. It's either making a spectacular play every now and then and also getting lucky. Again, when you're going up against top talent, you have to bring your A game, right? All three phases, pitching, hitting, defense. You can't make a mistake because this is a Lady Vols team that will capitalize on that. And then on top of making the routine plays, get a little lucky or hey make a nice grab over at shortstop which is which is exactly what they've done so far today that one will roll back in play off the back netting i think you're also seeing this buckeyes team starting to put together a complete team we mentioned all three phases of the game pitching allison smith doing a nice job this team coming in with a two era it's second best in the big 10. Rodriguez will look that one in at pitch 103. Smith gets strikeout. Team, you lost your ace, All-American, and Ashley Rogers. Your lineup looks a little different. The infield is shuffled around a little bit. So how do you get back there? Well, it starts with preseason and ends with postseason play. 
Tennessee has tried to navigate a really difficult schedule early on this season. They got their biggest win of the season earlier on this week. They traveled to Clemson, South Carolina and got that win over the Clemson Tigers. But then when you look down at this Tennessee team that plays in the SEC, LSU checks in at three, Georgia at six, Bama at 10, and oh yeah, Missouri comes in at 12 next weekend for Tennessee. An absolute gauntlet when it comes to the SEC in the softball. One of the most difficult conferences in Division I. And that's because of the pitching is at a high level. The hitting is at a very daunting level with home runs right and left. You're facing a good team every single weekend of conference play. How do you separate yourself from the pack? When you mention how difficult this one will be as Gottschall will grab that and fire with a first for out number one. You mentioned how difficult this SEC has been to navigate over the last few seasons, really since its inception. They bring in number one, Texas next year and number two, Oklahoma. Wow. <laughs> wow, right. My, kind of a mind blowing moment when you think of what that conference will look like with the addition of those two teams. It will change the, scape, the landscape of softball. Not just the landscape of that conference, the landscape of, of the sport, bringing in those two teams, shuffling it around like that. The competition will be even higher. Hard to think that you'll have even better hitters and, and even better pitching than what they have, but that will be the case when those two schools join in 2025. If we were sitting in 2025 right now, Tennessee and the SEC would have five of the top 10 in their conference. Washington would be the lone Big 12 team as will that one stay foul? It will not. But the Big 10 heating up as well. Northwestern, always a team that seems to make it into the NCAA tournament. Ohio State, they've been to this Knoxville Regional five times. Oh, and you mentioned Ohio State in that Big Ten. How about Jordy Ball transferring over to Nebraska? That makes that conference that much more competitive. Nebraska in the top 20 standings. You're seeing a little more parity with the transfer portal. It's good for the sport. Will it stay in play? Gibson will make the grab right at the wall for out number two in the fifth. Not an easy play for Gibson coming, crashing in from third towards that third base dugout. She does a nice job trying to find that dugout fence, not taking her eye off the ball and making that grab. A crucial second out here as Ohio State tries to get a two out rally going with Caitlin Farley. Caitlin Farley in the eight hole spot will square to bunt and see that one in for strike number one. This is the second time around in the lineup for Ohio State. And this is exactly what Coach Shanley is talking about. How quickly can you make adjustments on the hitter, or on the pitcher, excuse me. Gotchel with five strikeouts, still dealing that rise ball. And hitters need to be talking, communicating after every at bat to their teammates in the dugout, to their teammates on deck. What did you see? What did you lay off of? What does that rise ball look like? Am I better leaving a sneaky bunt? It's the second time through this lineup for Peyton Gotchel here in the fifth. Just one hit surrender. It was about a five foot bunt. <laughs> I was just gonna say it was a, not even a hit, barely even a hit. Sometimes that's all it takes. Rice ball again runs upstairs. Excellent job by Farley there laying off that rice ball. You could see her mind, her wheels turn in her head. She was thinking, yes, 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 no. Held up, recognized that break on that rice ball, was able to lay off of it to even the count. We'll get that out of an upperclassman. The junior discipline at the plate. She'll roll that one over to Destiny Rodriguez and on to first for out number three. Peyton Gottschall has been solid in the circle. Tennessee look so far again we are here in the fifth but I think for Ohio State if you can keep this game at two nothing Tennessee's got three four five in the lineup upcoming then Ohio State will flip their lineup next inning so I think this is a huge inning and will really shape this contest every moment from here on out in this two nothing game will be a crucial moment and it's these small details right getting Gibson 0-2 in the count, making the plays, routine plays. Everything counts. We'll see the 0-2, and that one will sneak outside of the third base bag. This is also the heart of the lineup. 
one of the toughest parts of this Lady Vols lineup to sit down. McKenna Gibson brings a lot of power, and then after that, more power, more power. So to be able to try to get through this lineup unscathed and keep the score the way it is, that would be a huge advantage, a huge win for Ohio State going into the top of the sixth. They'll bring nine, one, and two up in the sixth. So can Smith toe out of the fifth to turn the lineup back over for the Buckeyes. You mentioned the power in this three, four, and five holes for Tennessee. 382, McKenna Gibson with three homers. Pooney there in the four hole spot with five herself. And Mueller, she just had herself a day yesterday. Four home runs for Laura Mueller. That's also what gets opposing defenses and opposing pitchers, right? Is when you think you're able to cruise or when you think that you've had these hitters figure out, think again, you cannot make a mistake. Rise ball, off speed, what was it, Jill? A little bit of both. How about a, a, a rise change? <laughs> a range, we, we, could, we could call it that. We'll call it the funk, the one, two. Line right into center field, taking a step forward and then a step back, Eppley again. The veteran in center field, Epley, doing a nice job tracking this ball down. This was a laser off the bat of Gibson, and Epley does a nice job turning to her right side, making sure she gets that ball all the way in the glove. She didn't even have to leave her feet, but the senior with a nice play. Take another look at this. Oh, rocket off the bat. She turns to her glove side, takes that couple steps back, and holds on to it with her speed. A veteran move by the center fielder to hold a very, very good Gibson to an out. You could see when she was talking with her teammates after the out, she kind of drew a little zigzag with her finger saying, I didn't know where that ball was going, but a nice read by Epley out in center. That one was hit hard off of Gibson's bat, and we haven't seen Gibson, you know, hit dribblers very much. She's When she makes contact, she rips it, and this time it just came right at Epley. Two and one as Zeta Pooney looks in. Tennessee on this eight game win streak. We looked up 7.9 runs per game in this win streak. Prior to that this season, just 5.7. You see the two run difference, but that's a lot in softball to get those two more extra runs. And Tennessee just sitting there with two runs here in the fifth. Two runs can always be the difference, just like it is right now in this game. And I think when you look at that stat, the difference in that eight game winning streak. Also, you have to look at the competition. And again, going back to that St. Pete Clearwater Invitational facing the top teams in the country. That's when you're battle tested early. So you get ready for SEC. That one right back up to the middle. What a play. She couldn't hang on to it down there at second. Farley almost made a sports center grab there. You could see it in Farley's face. She's so pumped. She wasn't able to handle that ball on the back end. This is a rocket off Zeta Pooney's bat. She backhands this, quickly gets to her feet, but in the exchange from the glove to her hand, just too quick. She knew she had to get rid of it quick, even though Pooney's not a fast, run or fast runner. Still though, a nice grab by Farley. And hey, no damage right here, just a runner on, one down, and you have the double play ball available. Katie Taylor will take over at first. If Farley hangs onto that on the exchange, is that the best play we've seen? Oh, don't make me compare or rank those. <laughs> we've seen some spectacular plays. It, again, it doesn't surprise me. Ohio State has the best fielding percentage in the Big Ten right now. I've watched a lot of softball. I've watched a lot of baseball. It's hard to put together a highlight tape that Ohio State has done tonight. Just everywhere around this diamond, these young ladies are showing off tonight. When you have to, when you're facing top teams in the Big Ten, when you're facing top hitters in those schools, like we mentioned earlier, Northwestern, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Maryland, you have to have the defense to back up your pitcher to stay in those tight games when you're going up against top-ranked teams like Tennessee and the Lady Vols. And there's really no secret about it. Ohio State has not played a super difficult schedule early on in the season, but now they get 
their toughest opponent at number nine, Tennessee. These girls had to wait around the hotel lobby. They even went and ate at Aubrey's today. They have had <laughs> this game on their mind since they woke up this morning. And it has been a long day of just waiting around, but that has kind of fueled this Ohio State team. Did she lean into that one? I think that's what they're gonna rule. The batter cannot no, they're not. lean over the, the line of the batter's box, right? You have to stay in that batter's box. So if her elbow was not sticking out over the batter's box line and she was hit there, then she gets her free base. Take another look at this. Look at Mueller's left elbow right there, just barely skins her. It's hard to tell whether that was over the batter's box line or not. It definitely looks like it skinned her. And Mueller will take her first base, her free base. Looks like Burns maybe caught a little bit of it with her hand, trying to go through some movements just to maybe wants to throw a ball or two. Make sure she's okay. From this angle, I don't think she leaned into it at all. It, it was just kind of a stoppage of play, and then Mueller kind of just stood there. I thought that they were going to rule that, but no, not one bit at all. Mueller stood in and just took that pitch. Yeah, that was her natural hitting movement, but you did see Burns get burned, for lack of a better word, back there with her hand, kind of moving around, making sure it doesn't go numb, like making sure she, her throwing hand's okay. It's cold tonight here in Knoxville. Warm weather this week. It was a beautiful day yesterday for some softball, but some rain moved through today. Again, we were slated to have four games here in the <laughs> Tennessee Invitational today. But as that system moved through, it has really brought cold air and wind to this Invitational here tonight. That's what happens when you try to plan a tournament in March in Tennessee, right? Mother Nature laughs and says, oh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll see about that. Now, we're just happy to get this game in tonight, especially with how com competitive these two teams are right now in this Saturday night matchup. That one jumped off the bat and calling off everybody, and the ball will drop. Ohio State has been defensively handy all night, but miscommunication in center field will load the bases for the fourth time tonight. Ohio State had been solid all the way around defensively tonight, even showing off their speed and their glove. But right now, this is the kiss of death, right? The triangle of death. Farley's calling for it, but in comes Eppley from center, and she just bumps her. I was just about to ask you, is an infield fly rule a rule in college softball? I didn't realize it. And I, I, is that what they were discussing? Well, here's the funny thing. That wasn't on the infield. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I was that confused about. That was on about. the grass. We just saw the replay. Karen, Coach Weekly, absolutely fuming right now with that call. But yes, you're right, Zach. That's going to be an infield fly. So mm. unfortunately, Sophia Nugent is going to be called out. However, the runners do stay at their base. So we still have runner on third and then Lauren Mueller who got hit by the pitch your runner on second the infield fly rule is, has always been a rule that kind of has some jagged edges in my opinion and that was an infield fly rule ruled in the outfield another jagged edge <laughs> gray a lot of gray area i guess you could say or in this case a lot of dirt <laughs> and i guess since the pitch was or the the ball was dropped that's why they're allowed to advance 60 feet yes yes i think more importantly here 60 feet closer to home plate right so you have again coach weekly she's she is mimicking the the outfielders right now i'd love to be a fly on her jacket because I can understand why she's upset. Let's see if we can take one more look at this. Our camera crew has done a fantastic job tonight, getting us so close to the action. So here it is. You have the two runners. They're close by their bags. Farley's calling for it. Farley goes on the grass, and Eppley, just because she's behind her, bumps her. 
and that ball comes out. Now, I wonder if it's because Farley is the one that called for it. Farley's the second baseman on the dirt, and because of that, that's why it's considered an infield fly. Still difficult call, and you can see with the wind blowing out, that probably wasn't an easy pop-up. I think that that ball was originally destined for the infield to stay on the infield fly roll, and then the wind took it. That, that's really the only explanation that I can think logically you could give rolling that an infield fly. Ohio State with a little bit of a, a break, even though they dropped the pop fly, they don't have the bases loaded. Now they have that second out, two runners on. They got to minimize the damage here, try to get away unscathed. Taylor Panel at the dip, rips that one left field and it will go foul and now Ohio State has towed out of trouble plenty of times tonight and Allison Smith has been clutch in the circle can she do it again in the fifth two in scoring position for Tennessee they're just two of nine with runners in scoring position tonight and on the flip side Tennessee here with a chance to to bust this open to get some insurance runs and extend the lead with runners on second and third. They got to come up with the clutch hitting here with two outs. The rain starting to fall in Knoxville, but that will not stop Taylor panel and it gets over the right fielder's shoulder. Rounding second on to third, two runs in, and it's an RBI triple for Taylor panel and Tennessee leads four to nothing. Panel is quickly proving why she deserves to be in this Tennessee lineup. Does an excellent job going with the outside pitch and letting her power extend through the barrel. Take another look. This is on the outside low corner. She gets her barrel through the zone, gets her hips through the zone, and lets her body do the rest. A tough play by Heckman in right field as Lady Vols are able to push two across now, extend their lead for nothing. Heckman, the right fielder, that was a, a tough play. Her first step, I saw her, she took a first step in, and that was the kiss of death for her because that ball, had she just turned and started to go over her left shoulder, just first step back, she might have been able to track that down a little easier. Regardless, it was a rocket off the bat of panel. Great piece of hitting. The rain starting to blow in sideways. The wind blowing out toward right field made it even more of a more difficult play for the right fielder in Heckman. Kutsoyanopoulos with a split grip. She'll see that one in at strike two. That split grip, something Kutsoyanopoulos has learned from hitting coach Chris Malvo with the correct sequence with your bottom half and your bottom hand, you're, then your top hand is able to get that natural power and pop through the zone. We'll follow that one straight up and it'll be one and two. Oh, and two, excuse me. Kutsoyanopoulos hitting 303, one of several Lady Vols hitting over 300. This is her second year in the program and Coach Weekly calling her a defensive specialist because you could throw her anywhere. Left field, catcher, first base, she'll find a way and she'll get it done. The one, two. Right in there at two, Ooh. two. You mentioned. You, she wanted that change up. You could see her track that all the way in. Her body even got low, but an excellent job by Katsoyanopoulos laying off on that changeup. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if Smith goes back to it again with the 2-2 count. The transfer from Arizona sees this one in and will keep this one on the infield. Dirt and she'll leg it out. She's safe. <laughs> Julia cuts Soyanopoulos with a nice piece of hitting to extend this Tennessee lead to five. Great at bat by Katsoyanopoulos. Able to get around on that inside pitch. Wasn't hit very hard to shortstop quarter cracks, but quarter cracks just hesitated slightly. And because of that, Katsoyanopoulos was able to beat it out. This one on her hands, but she uses her wheels right away. That's a hard ball for quarter cracks to come across her body and throw to first. We talk a lot, praise a lot about Katsoyanopoulos. Very rarely do we talk about her speed. Well, she used her speed there to her advantage. A speed that got her about a half step in time to add run number five for Tennessee here 
in this ball game, three in in the fifth. We mentioned this was going to be the inning that Ohio State had to get out of. We mentioned how lucky and how good they've been defensively tonight. It turns in inning number five. And I can't help but go back to that error on Farley. It really wasn't an error because she had a, a great play, just missed the ball with the exchange. That was the second hitter. That was Zeta Pooney. And since then, Lady Vols have been able to, to get on. Also a free bag hit by pitch. Laura Mueller getting hit. So that was a mistake from Smith and Ohio State. Those small things, they add up. And a team like Tennessee will take advantage. The one, two, swung on and missed, but not before the damage is done. Tennessee, three runs in the fifth. They've got their largest lead. As a hitter for the Buckeyes, you have to come to the plate with a game plan. Are you going to either lay off of it or are you going to go for it and meet it on the same plane? If you decide to go after it, then you have to start your hands high, keep that barrel on top of that ball and through the zone. If you decide to lay off of it completely, that's fine. But you have to make sure you know exactly what you're doing when you step into that box with a game plan. Well, this is the fourth time through the lineup. We're at this very top of the lineup, excuse me, the bottom of the lineup with Mackenzie Bump coming up right now, the nine hole hitter. They have seen Peyton Gottschall. They have been able to communicate in the dugout. What are you seeing? How difficult is that rise ball? So again, when you're facing a top pitcher such as Peyton Gottschall, who has a ton of experience under her belt and also that deceptive spin, you gotta know what you're doing before you stepped up to the plate. Peyton Gottschall now 67 pitches in here in the sixth. An efficient night tonight for 33 in those smoky gray unis for Tennessee. Gottschall was such a huge addition to the Lady Vols pitching staff last season. Transferring over from Bowling Green and she made an immediate impact in that behind Ashley Rogers, the Lady Vols All-American and ace. She still was able to go the distance and had 110 innings last season for the Lady Vols when finished with a 16 and two record, a 165 ERA. She also led the pitching staff in appearances with 29. So this is a young woman who quickly made an impact in year one and now is just trying to build off of it even better, trying to have a better year, 2024. She just throws strikes and she strikes out batters 130 last season now up to 61 here in 2024 she's a staple in that bowling green program 2022 mac picture of the year but now she's a staple in this tennessee staff and ace 1a or 1b no matter how you look at it i like that 1a 1b there, there is no clear ace this season with the pitching staff after graduate senior Ashley Rogers has finally hung up her cleats. It's now Peyton Gottschall and Carlin Pickens. They are a one-two punch and they complement each other very well. For Tennessee, strike three called. Peyton Gottschall is dealing in the circle today. I love how she goes to her changeup for that punch out pitch. Take another look at this. She tries to hold up, tries to keep her hands back. It looks like almost it was tipped a little bit, but still it will be counted as a strikeout or the sixth strikeout for Peyton Gottschall. This one's slow roller to Gibson and she makes it, makes the play for out number two. Gottschall has just been filthy in the circle today. Again, a nice outing, six strikeouts today. Just one hit, it was about a five foot bunt and 72 now pitches in. Another look at this one, kind of just rolls off the hands of Cordelletti. Easy play for Gibson at three. Gibson able to keep that one off the dirt. The one out. In there for a strike at one and one for Gottschall. Heckman struck out her first time against Gottschall against a rise pitch, a rise ball. And then her second at bat was trying to lay down the sack bunt, was successful with the sack bunt. Moved the runner over, Cordelletti. So 0 for 2 today, but this is a senior in the lineup. 
in the two-hole spot. This is who you count on to get rallies going, and she's got to make adjustments at the plate, especially with that rise ball. And now we also see Gottschall's changeup really starting to bring heat. Taylor Heckman will pull back and see the rise ball upstairs. Gottschall has thrown just an absolute gem tonight. Looking to cap off inning number six for Tennessee. That one launched and that'll be hit number two on the night. Taylor Heckman gets hit number two. And now the one and two spots have the lone hits in this lineup for Ohio State. Nice at bat by Heckman, the senior. Saw a couple pitches, was able to get her barrel around that one. Wasn't hit very hard, but because it wasn't hit very hard, it was able, able to drop in front of Kiki Malloy. And now Ohio State with a runner on, two outs. This is a great opportunity for them to get something going here. They're gonna have to get it going here in the six with the three spot due up in Jasmine Burns. Burns a 319 hitter, four home runs, those 16 RBIs. And this is who you want right now up at the plate, right? Your heart of your lineup, your three hole hitter, someone that's been hitting ball well. She'll launch that one foul. It goes Burns, Quarter Cracks, Hackenbrack, and Epley for Ohio State. Burns struck out on the rice ball her first at bat and then popped up to the catcher. Nugent, her second at bat. Trying to make adjustments here. Crucial at bat. See that one in for a strike. Now at one and two, advantage to Gottschall. Anytime you get behind in the count as a hitter, it's tough because the pitcher is able to come at you with exactly what she wants to throw. Nice curveball outside corner. It was ball to bring the count 2 2. But Burns ideally has a game plan in mind when it comes to that rise or that changeup. She has a pitch she's looking for. But with two strikes, she also has to protect anything close. The 2 2. Inside. Burns has the power. 32 career home runs in high school for in her collegiate debut season. For Coach Shanley and the Buckeyes. Tied for the most home runs on the team. That open stance allows her to get both eyes fully on the pitch. 3-2, line that one back up the middle. It's a base hit. Jasmine Burns has the third single for Ohio State. She is lit over there at first base, and the Buckeyes have a golden opportunity to cut into this lead. Excellent at bat by Jasmine Burns. The freshman goes to a full count against Gottschall. Rips this pitch, kind of left over the middle a little bit. Does a nice job getting her barrel through the zone, taking it right back up where it came from. And Ohio State now with a little momentum on their side. You can hear the dugout cheering, hollering, as now they have back-to-back -back singles for the Buckeyes. And we will see a new young lady on the, in the circle for Tennessee. Peyton Gottschall's night is done. Peyton Gottschall's night is done. Carlin Pickens, the talented sophomore, gets the ball in the circle for Tennessee, an 0-1 count after a check swing was ruled a strike. Cami Quartercraft will line this one over to shortstop. Faw deep into the shortstop hole, makes the play for out number three. Tennessee needing a quick out to end this Ohio State rally, and it comes from DC. The pitch to Malloy is low and in for a strike, 0 and 1. Malloy, in her final season with the Lady Vols, has been such a catalyst for this team, both offensively and defensively. All American, top 50 watch list, the home run queen, single season record for home runs, also led all of Division I last year with 25 long balls. She has navigated this SEC now four years in a row, this being her fifth season. Tennessee will welcome Missouri next weekend, and then LSU, Georgia, and Kentucky to Lee Stadium this season. They'll go on the road, South Carolina, Auburn, Mississippi State, just to name a few. The SEC has already started conference play this weekend, again, with the uneven amount of teams in the SEC. Each team kind of gets a weekend off from competition. LSU quickly to a 2-0 start in conference, as well as A&M, Missouri 2-0 so far this weekend against Auburn. 
as Malloy waited on that one and will be aligned to left field. Coraletti with the grab for out one. Malloy does a nice job keeping her hands back on that changeup. Also staying in her legs. That's what you have to do when you're trying to get an off, hit an off-speed pitch. But Coraletti just in perfect placement, able to get a crucial first out for Ohio State. Kiki Malloy seems to be the only batter that's figured out that just nasty off-speed pitch. Just sat back on that one, but didn't set back in enough time to keep that one in front of her. One out here in the sixth, 142 pitches in. My arm would have fallen off already. <laughs> That's what you expect from your veteran in the circle and senior Allison Smith. Coach Shane Lee just preaching her abilities, not only what she can do with her arsenal, but also methodically how smart she is. Out in line, shortstop, quarter cracks is there, and that's easy. Out number two for Ohio State. Quarter cracks having a very nice night tonight with the exception of one little hiccup on a grounder to shortstop. She's done a nice job, and same with Smith. I've been very impressed by the senior tonight, how she's been able to simmer down these bats from the Lady Vols. Tennessee with five hits tonight, and really not a no extra basis with the exception of that one triple back in the third inning. A lot of these mistakes have been just small little ground balls or that hit by pitch and the, the E4 back in inning four. That's what really hurt Ohio State. But now, hopefully, the Buckeyes trying to look to not allow any more damage from Tennessee, including any damage from this young woman in McKenna Gibson. You mentioned the damage was done in inning number five. Four. Four, five, somewhere there. <laughs> Three runs in the fifth for the big orange. Yeah, that's it, that one. 2-0 into Gibson at two and one. Tennessee able to spread a couple runs across, one in the first, one in the second, and then just that big inning. Seven batters came to the plate in the fifth. And Gibson will see a hitter's count at three and one. Pitch. That one line left side will drop down for a base hit. Hit number six on the night for Tennessee. McGinnis Gibson with a single in inning number six. We call her Boo Gibson here on Rocky Top. And now Katie Taylor will grab a bat and hit here in the four hole spot. It was Zeta Pooney here in the cleanup spot. Taylor will step in and on pitch 150 of the night. Outstride and in for a strike at 0-1. And, and I grew up playing baseball my whole life, but once I started to watch softball, that's one of the things that I really just impressed me is that these girls can go out and throw a buck 50 and just be going right along. That grounder. Over to third in time for out number three. And Tennessee is stranding Gibson down at first. High of her career high. And you saw Carlin Pickens there. I've not seen a young lady be so happy to play in the circle. She is just always lit up and ready to go and having fun there for Tennessee. Pickens is a firecracker. She has that fight, that bulldog in her. Even though she's just a sophomore, she's coming off a fantastic freshman year, being named SEC Freshman of the Year. Just her first season with the Lady Vols, so a lot to build off of. And as Coach Weekly tells us, continuing to grow with every game. Second team All-SEC as well last season. She had a 3.92 ERA last season. Bring that down to .72 here in 2024 in her sophomore campaign. The combination of both Pickens and Gotchel, that one-two punch going to be difficult for teams this year when they go up against Tennessee. They also complement each other well. 
Gotchel, we talked a lot about her spin, that rise ball. Well, Pickens, very different. She's a power pitcher. She throws in that low to mid-70s. That's the equivalent of a 100-mile-per-hour fastball in baseball. Strike out number one on the night for Pickens. She doesn't have to bring the gas there, but she gets out number one here in the seventh. Pickens doesn't locate this one well, but because of that speed, goes down swinging for her first strikeout of the night. Strikeout number 82 this season for Carlin Pickens. She had an Aaron Judge-esque 99 home <laughs> runs last season. Tennessee pitching has been phenomenal tonight. And for these fans' troubles today with all the rain delays, if they get one more strikeout, free Mo's queso for this whole entire stadium as Gibson will throw that over to first in time. That's a really nice play from McKenna Gibson at third. Hard hit ground ball from Eppley's bat. Gibson able to stay with it. It kind of jumps on her in the last second, but because she's in the right position, because she's in front of that ball, able to make that grab. Take another look at it to her glove side. She's able to give with it when it jumps, makes the play over to one. Excellent play by Gibson at third. That is a hard play to make. That ball jumped up. You don't get a lot of soft ground balls at third. I will tell you that. So sooner or later, you just get used to shots at you. And you either got a glove on it or you don't. And Gibson had a glove on that one. Excellent job. Tennessee looking to finish off. It would be a 3-0 start in the Tennessee Invitational. Looking to extend their record in this Invitational that started back in 2010 to 45 and four if they can hang on here today. These two teams will play again tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern time, right back here at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. It's gonna be much watch, must watch TV tomorrow as well. We miss you tomorrow. We wish you the best. Jill Jelnick will have Thank you. Faith Kane here in the booth with us tomorrow. I always love joining you guys on Rocky Top. Always so much fun calling these broadcasts and seeing excellent softball here in Knoxville. The 2 1 from Pickens. That one fouled back by number 14, Destiny Norrie. She'll grab a bat and hit in the seven hole here in the seventh. Tennessee one strike away from extending that win streak to nine. Pickens, the 2-2. That one sharply hit right side, diving out to make a grab is Taylor Panel, but she'll fall just short of that. Great effort by Panel, laying out for that foul ball. Potentially could have been the last out of the game, which throws her hands up and says, I tried, I gave it everything I have. And that's exactly what you're trying to do when you're trying to crack into that Lady Vols lineup. She's done an excellent job this weekend coming in and taking advantage of her opportunities. The 2-2 two -two from Pickens. Low at 3-2. Zach, the big takeaway for me for Ohio State is this gonna, is going to be a Buckeyes team that's going to be able to compete and compete every weekend in the Big Ten very close to a complete team, pitching, defense, offense. Coach Shanley excited about this group, and you can see why after this weekend. Pickens 3-2. Rise ball runs upstairs, and Ohio State has a pulse here in the seventh. On the flip side, Tennessee firing on all cylinders when it comes to that pitching staff, when it comes to that lineup, also defensively looking very good as they get ready to start SEC play next weekend. Both teams playing some of their best softball right now ahead of conference play, and that's exactly why you have these preseason games. Two outs, one on in the seventh. There's Coach Weekly with Karen's game book. Pretty sure she doesn't go anywhere without it. She takes it with her home. She takes it with her when she's cooking dinner. No, I'm just making that up, but I'm pretty sure she has eyes on that at all times. 
Karen Weekly going over some notes while cooking up a mean lasagna in the <laughs> Weekly household. <laughs> Ralph will pass her the Parmesan while she's <laughs> studying up. The 01. We've lost all control. It's 10 o'clock Eastern here. <laughs> it's been a long day. Been a long day for us, but especially for these players. They've been waiting all day to get on this diamond, show what they can do and compete. And it's been an excellent game so far as the Buckeyes try one last attack here, top of the seventh with two down. 0 oh 2. Pickens looking to slam the door shut. And then but they're a rise ball high at one and two. I like that pitch from Pickens out of the zone. It's an 0-2 count. Don't give her anything good because she's right now. Cruz has to be able to protect, get a, get a bat on anything here, especially with a runner on first to keep this rally alive. The pitch is hit left side. Will it hang in play? It will. It will. But left fielder and Katie Taylor can't grab it. And Ohio State, the, their eyes are on the top of that lineup. If you can flip it over, they're in the eight spot here. Bump coming up here in the nine spot. Just get on base and pass the baton if you're the Buckeyes. Hitting is contagious. If there's anything we've learned in this sport, it's not over till it's over. And it's over now. Strikeout number two for Carlin Pickens, and she slams the door shut here in the seventh. Pickens comes in, takes care of business right away. Ohio State tried to get a rally going, but she says not so fast. Excellent job coming in in relief for Pickens and a great job by Pete and Gottschall have given the Buckeyes trouble early on in this game. The Tennessee.